Hello everybody, when I speak now about fake people, I mean by that a fake image of a person that is used normally to tell a story that is different than what and who this person is. In the past, of course, I made a couple of videos about fake people in personal life, about narcissists and about manipulation techniques that can turn our lives, our personal lives into hell if we don't pay attention. Here now, I'd like to talk about how to identify fake people before getting engaged with them in business. I think that will help us avoid losing a lot of money, a lot of time, health, and many other resources. The big problem that we face today is that many people pretend to be something or somebody that they are not. In addition to how easy it is to create impressive online profiles in social networks and blogs and websites, even without being actually what they claim to be. I'm not saying that online marketing tools are not important. I'm just saying that just like they help the competent, they also help the charlatans. So before deciding to go into a partnership with someone or hire an employee or work with someone who promises too much without actions, we need first to develop a new kind of observation and not to rely only on the image or on the public persona or the facade or what the subject says about himself. First, we need to invite the subject to a coffee or to a dinner or to an interview in order to look for warning signals and red flags. Now, in the meeting, we need to differentiate between two kinds of fake subjects, the covert and the overt. The covert is the hidden. This person doesn't talk much. He doesn't contribute much to the conversation. He keeps all his cards to himself. Not because he's too shy, but because he doesn't want to make any statement that may be invalidated later, or that he may be confronted with. Not to get me wrong, not every silent person is a covert fake person, but if the silence takes too long, if you find yourself the only one opening all your cards, genuinely exposing who you really are, hoping to find a like-minded partner, yet after 15 minutes of nodding his head, smiling and using agreeing body language, you ask a question, but he answers with something that has nothing to do with, with the question or with what you just said. Or if he twists your words, making interpretations that are not relevant to the point, this should be a red flag. Remember that business is about exchanging information precisely. That can happen only by actively understanding each other. If there is no sharp communication skills of one side or by both, we'd be wasting a lot of resources on misunderstanding each other rather than on creativity. Now, the refuge of the covert is his silence because it keeps him outside the range of judgment. Guess what? Not anymore. If you want to avoid a covert fake person, don't buy into his vacuum and leave. I won't even recommend to talk about it because your interest is not to change people, but to find a business partner. And also, if you try to change people, that may lead to a personal conflict that is not necessary. Remember, in our generation, almost everybody's mom told him they're genius, even without doing anything. And if we try to challenge mom's statement, we could be facing a serious conflict especially if you're dealing with a covert fake person who's a narcissist. So when facing a covert fake image, stay polite and leave. The second part is the overt fake image. Those are more noisy and easier to detect. Some even talk too much that even they don't listen to themselves. Those are not interested in your opinion. And even when you say something crucial, they won't be there to listen. And even when they make the impression as if they were listening, they wouldn't be listening to understand, but to reply. While you're talking, they'd be too busy thinking what to say. This is a big red flag that indicates to lack of basic communication skills. To be able to detect those, you need to maintain a high standard of reasonable and logical debate. Because the most important thing to pay attention to here is how the overt fake image tries to shift the debate from logical and reasonable to personal or spiritual or to his point of view on how life should work. Every time the subject ridicules or tries to avoid or reframe reasonable statements, pay attention to that because this could be as a result of pride 
combined with ignorance. And that is the most toxic recipe for any business partnership, especially when the proud and the ignorant is more noisy and more dominant than the knowledgeable. Another sign can be lying in your face. They could make a certain statement, but later, in the conversation later, when you confront them with that statement, they may open the eyes of the puppy and say, I didn't say that, or I was not angry, while they expressed anger emotionally, and they were angry. When they lie in your face and try to make you think that your perception is twisted, that's like a child that made something wrong and tries to get away with it by blaming daddy for being wrong. And unlike the life of the child in the adult and business world, this thing can be much more damaging because you don't want to deal with adults who are still stuck in their childhood. Another sign is radical statements. If the subject tries to confront your reasonable argument with illogical, radical statements, just not to lose the debate, this is a big red flag because his ego is more important than the business. And for me, the business is more important. Those radical statements can be really radical. I personally heard people saying, I can fly or I'm never angry. Another sign, borderline. Business quality is also measured through consistency and reliability. So if you meet someone who is inconsistent with his mood and his statements, that's a big red flag because that will keep you confused and busy looking for what is relevant. And you'll never find what is relevant because the only relevant thing here is the mood and the mindset of the borderline that keeps changing. So remember, you need to focus on the business, not on the shifting mood of anybody. One last thing to remember, beside the fact that you maintain reasonable debate, you have to be who you really are because this next red flag could be seen only when you show your true self. This red flag would be toxic judgment. It is important to observe how the subject makes his judgments and on what he bases them. Toxic judgment would be made when the subject's belief is challenged by your truth and by what you stand for. First, the subject judges when nobody asks his opinion and he already works on selling you his point of view to be true, regardless from a logical argument. He may use spiritual quotes or social definitions that confirm his judgment, but never back it with a reasonable statement. Two, a judgment can be toxic when it's based on ignorance. When someone doesn't know all sides and all facts, Yet he claims to know the truth and how you should behave in relevance. Here, the toxic judge doesn't care about the facts. All he cares about is to enforce his point of view as the truth. And he can even make radical statements to back it up. By the way, with the borderline people, they can also agree with you and you agree with them. And out of the sudden, they change and turn against you with judgments that they're not in position to make. And normally, they succeed to confuse some people and make them more apologetic just to accept the authority of the borderline. So be aware of that because this is a big red flag. In general, you can see one or more of those red flags here and there. So you need to be careful. Three, a judgment can be toxic when it's based on hypocrisy. When someone tells you how you should live your life and how you should live your marriage, when their marriage is a mess, when someone preaches compassion while judging you for not being compassionate, not good for business. So now after we know some of what we need to pay attention to, we need to want to know the truth, to expose the truth, not to compromise it, neither for friendship nor for emotional manipulation. If we're not skilled to detect fake people in business, we could pay a heavy price for that. I hope I could help and inspire you with that. I'm Shreddy Jabarin. Thank you so much for watching.